sedimentary structures can convey information about how and where sedimentary rocks were deposited. They are a story about the Earth's past told in a language that you can easily learn. For example, a piece of sandstone like this may have been deposited at a beach, a submarine canyon, a sand dune, or in a river. With the help of sedimentary structures, we can determine which of these environments existed years ago when the sand that made the sandstone was being deposited. The most common sedimentary structure is a bedding plane, for most sediment is deposited into water. Sediment will settle out of the water, creating a flat layer. Sand, mud, sand, mud, layer after layer. Over time, the sand becomes cemented into sandstone, and the mud is compressed into shale, resulting in the distinct layers or strata of sedimentary rocks. Each flat layer is a bed, the flat surface that the sediment created as it settled out of the water for a very long rest. How do you know if these bedding planes came from deposits in an ocean or in a lake? Well, fossils can help, like this fish fossil that shows that the shale and sandstone in the Monterey Formation of California was a shallow sea 10 to 12 million years ago. Or these reptile footprints in sandstone of the Grand Canyon, indicating that during the Permian, this area was composed of sand dunes. Even without fossils, rock layers hold clues to their origins. Sandstone from sand dunes may have distinctive layers called cross-bedding. These beautiful layers seen in the Aztec sandstone tells us that this area of Nevada was once a vast desert full of sand dunes. Wind blows sand up the back of the sand dune and the sand slips down the steep side known as the slip face. The wind continuously blows up one side and creates more beds falling down the other side. Here you can see the normal horizontal beds and the cross beds. Cross bedding can also form as sand falls down the edge of a river delta. How can you tell that this cross bedding is from a delta and not a sand dune? Look at the size of the grains. Wind doesn't deposit pebbles, but water does. You can also look at this and determine this cross beds and the original direction of flow, which must have been to the right. I can also tell that this rock layer is in the upright position. This is up. Determining which way is up may not always be obvious, because although rock layers are originally horizontal, tectonic forces can cause rock layers to tilt. They may tilt so much that they've become overturned. So how do we know which was originally the top of the layer? If we're lucky, we can find sedimentary structures that give us a clue. When sand or mud is first deposited, it may be sculpted by the wind or the water, creating ripple marks. You could even tell the direction in which the wind or water traveled in order to make the ripples. If, however, the ripples are symmetrical, we can tell that it was formed at the beach where waves oscillate back and forth. The resulting sandstone and shale holds clues not only to the kind of environment in which it was deposited, but also the direction of the wind or the current millions of years ago. What would happen if a mud flat or a desert lake dried up? Well, the mud would dry and shrink, creating mud cracks. Here are some mud cracks that even contain the craters of little raindrops. These are mud cracks in a little playa between the sand dunes and Death Valley. Now, it will probably rain and this will become mud again. However, if the cracked mud is covered by sediment and later becomes shale, it will retain the mud cracks and may look like this. So if you find shale with mud cracks, then you can be certain that the mud was deposited on land where it could dry up. A very different environment of deposition would be a submarine canyon. Here is Monterey Canyon that brings sediment from the shallow continental shelf down 
to the deeper water. The sediment builds up at the top of the canyon until it finally avalanches down the canyon in what is known as a turbidity current. The avalanche of sand, silt, and clay is deposited at the base of the continental shelf in a submarine fan. As the sediment settles out, the larger sediments land first because they're heavier. The result is a graded bed. With each turbidity current comes another graded bed. Here you can see the result of three different turbidity currents making three graded beds. The resulting layers of graded beds are called turbidites. These turbidites contain a very messy form of sandstone called gray wacky. So when you find turbidites, you know that the rock started off as turbidity currents deposited at the base of a submarine canyon. These are just a few of the structures that help geologists discern ancient landscapes from today's rocks. Now you have a few more words in the language that will help you decipher the world around you. Should you be lucky enough to go to Zion National Park, you and all of the other tourists will get to see a beautiful landscape carved by erosion. But if you look more carefully at the rock, you may see crossbedding, and you will see a land filled with sand dunes. Of course, back in the Jurassic, the sand dunes would have dinosaurs on them.